Okay, let's now finish up this video by talking about how PyTorch handles weight initialization and how we can change it if we wanted to. So I looked at the current source code of PyTorch because yeah, the weight initialization that they do by default changed over the different version over time. So currently in version 1.8, they use the Kaiming He uniform weight initialization. So I found the source code, the relevant one here, if you want to check it out yourself. And um, this corresponds also to the fully connected to the linear layer. For the convolutional layer, I saw it's the same though. So they use the same weight initialization now for both the fully connected and the convolutional layer. In previous versions, they had a slightly different weight initialization. Yeah, and um, now looking at this here, you may wonder besides climbing uniform, what these different things are. So here, this um, math um, square root five, this is, I think, for the leaky ReLU. So that is if you, yeah, if you use a leaky ReLU, you would add that number. So they are assuming that if you use a fully connected layer, that you also use a leaky ReLU activation. Uh, in practice, personally, I tried um, also using the zero, which is usually what people would put in here for the regular ReLU, if I used the regular ReLU and I didn't really notice any difference. So it might be better yeah, to use this for the leaky ReLU and put, uh, set it to zero for the normal ReLU. I will show you in the next slide how we can do that um, more conveniently than modifying the source code. But in practice, personally, I didn't notice a big difference. Um, so yeah, here's an example of how we could manually overwrite the yeah, initialization that is done automatically, because uh, if we initialize these layers, it will basically execute this one to do the Kaiming her initialization. But if we wanted to, we can overwrite it. So how I like to do this, I mean, there are multiple ways you can do it, but how I like to do it is I like to put this for loop after my sequential loop. So here what I'm doing is I'm iterating through all the modules in the network. However, here I'm only interested in yeah, the fully connected modules, not in, let's say, ReLU and things like that. So here I'm pulling out essentially only the fully connected ones. And then I'm using torch and in init chimic uniform and provided with the corresponding weight. So the weight corresponding to M, the linear layer. And I'm setting it to fan in and nonlinearity ReLU. So this is es essentially the default, by the way, too. So this is what is done by default. Oh, no, actually, that's not true. By default, uh, it should be leaky ReLU. But fan in, that's the default. And usually that's by default leaky ReLU. I'm changing it to ReLU. Personally, I don't, don't notice any big difference. Uh, another thing, if you wanted to, you can set the bias to zero or you can use the initialization scheme they use here. Also, for that, personally, I didn't notice any difference, but I just trust that the PyTorch developers did a lot of testing and also yeah, uh, considered community feedback. So I think this one is probably better than this one. Except, of course, um, yeah, the other one on the previous slide is more gear, get towards a leaky ReLU and I have a regular ReLU here. But yeah, anyways, your mileage may vary. And there's another thing I also wanted to say at the end of the video, why this may matter less than you might think. So um, yeah, another example here is the normal initialization. So using uh, Gaussian distribution. So same concept. Now I'm setting the weights here to uh, yeah values from a Gaussian distribution. So with mean zero and standard deviation 0 0.001. So why am I using the detach here? I also already used that in the previous slide, if you have noticed here. So what is the detach? So that is because when we initialize something that has weight parameters, so linear has parameters. So let me go back to slides. So in PyTorch, there is a thing called parameter, and these are all the learnable parameters. And they have the gradient um, attribute activated by default. And so what happens is that for that part, for weight and bias, PyTorch will track the gradients when we do computations. However, we don't want to have the weight initialization be part of, let's say, a computation graph or the gradient computation. So here by detaching it from the 
uh, computation graph. I kind of prevent that for this part a gradient is computed. So it's just like for convenience. No, not convenience, I think otherwise it might not even work. Because it's kind of yeah uh, a weird operation to include in the computation graph. Because it's just, this should be es essentially our starting point and not part of the computation graph. Okay, so yeah, here's the, uh, how we could then also initialize it from a Gaussian distribution. And actually, when I run this, I get uh, got, like some really funny results. So on the left-hand side, so if you want to replicate that, by the way, here's all the GitHub code. So there are also the other ones if you go here. Um, so when I was training this network, I noticed that nothing happened for a while. So for about like almost 20 epochs. And uh, yeah, then suddenly, I don't know, it got a push or something and then the loss <laughs> started to go down. So it started training after epoch 20 or so, which was funny. I've never seen something that weird, but usually also I would stop the training if it doesn't stop, uh, start learning after a few epochs. So anyway, so that was kind of funny. It uh, eventually learned to perform pretty well, but that was yeah, still interesting. For the Kaiming He initialization, that trained pretty well. Uh, uh, yeah, to begin with, uh, was not such an issue, so that looks actually much better. And this is yeah why we would, for example, use Kaiming He initialization for a uh, network with ReLU activations. I should say though, what I mentioned earlier is that we use if we use batch norm, then actually this initial feature weight or weight choice is less important than you might think. So because yeah, the batch normalization normalizes um, the activations anyways. So in that way, it's less important what type of weight initialization we choose, at least in my opinion. So when we try or when I tried this in practice, so we can see now that on the left hand side, I'm showing you the Gaussian initialization with batch norm that things train also well for this case. So actually, yeah, with batch norm, it trains even faster than Kaiming her without batch norm. All right, so yeah, this is just um, a brief overview of different weight initialization schemes. It's uh, maybe something you might want to consider, but the PyTorch defaults are yeah reasonable if you use the ReLU activation. If you use different types of activation functions, you may want to see whether there's a better weight initialization scheme, but also again, with batch norm, things are quite robust. All right, so this is yeah the lecture on batch norm and weight initialization then, and next week we will cover optimization algorithms.